Hello, friends. It's Talking Heads of Atascacita. My name is Amy Bridwell, and I'm overjoyed to be on the phone with Monsignor James Golazinski on this Thursday of the fifth week of Lent. Monsignor, we're advancing through John's Gospel, and people keep asking Jesus, who, it, who are you? Yeah. Uh, as we get closer to Holy Week, uh, the Church selects those passages from John's Gospel showing the growing a conflict between him and, and uh, particularly the Pharisees. Mm-hmm. And uh, it started building tension up, you might say, as we are yes. approaching uh, Holy Week. Very dramatic so readings begin. today, yes. Okay. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. And direct us, O Lord, in all our actions, that every work and prayer may begin with thee, and that they be successfully completed through Christ our Lord. Amen. St. John. Pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Yeah, today's gospel is one of the most dramatic I have ever read. It always gives me goosebumps. You know, there's something interesting there in that uh, after our Lord said that Abraham longed to see his day and saw it and was glad. Mm -hmm. Remember what their response was? You're not 50 years old and you have seen Abraham? Yeah, there's some scholars uh, wonder why they said you're not yet 50 years of age. Mm -hmm. Now, normally, if, say, somebody looks like he was in his 30s, which our Lord was, Mm -hmm. wouldn't you normally say you're not yet 40 years old? Oh, yeah, I've never thought about that. Yes. Yeah, I, I saw a little essay about that one time. And some scholars had wondered if there's a little hint in that, uh, and that they uh, said to him, you're, you're not yet 50 years of age, because they didn't know when he was born, mm-hmm. but they were going by appearances. Yes. And so uh, there's this uh, wonder whether or not he was prematurely aged in his appearance. And that's the reason why they didn't say you're not yet 40 years of age. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We don't know the names of many of those. One of them was, of course, Gamaliel. Mm-hmm. He was the wise, wise one. He was the one at whose feet Paul had sat when he was a child. Mm-hmm. And Paul was talking about his credentials. He talked about he was a, tri- a member of the tribe of Benjamin, the Pharisee of the Pharisee, and how he sat at the feet of Gamaliel. Mm-hmm. Gamaliel was the one who uh, warned uh, the uh, opposition to our Lord, uh, well, the opposition to the apostles, is after the resurrection. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, they were persecuting the apostles. And Gamaliel said, well, you know, let's, let's kind of play it by ear. Mm-hmm. Uh, if this is of human origin, you know, it'll disappear. Mm-hmm. If it is not, you can't. Huh? You can't stop it. That's right. Mm-hmm. So Gamaliel was a, kind of a wise man. But mm-hmm. anyway, one of the problems that uh, people have in answering the question, uh, who is he, is they project project their ideologies or they pro- project the fads uh, of the times, etc. For example... Uh, back in the 19th century, you know, science was developing mm-hmm. at a breakneck speed. Mm-hmm. And anyway, there was a woman in Boston named Mary Baker Eddy, and she started a church there in Boston. What was the name of it? Do you remember? Oh, I'm, I've got it right here. Founded the Church of Christ Scientist in New England, 1879. Right, right. See, she made our Lord into... Uh, 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 a very advanced person. He was a scientist 2,000 years, uh, 1,800, 1,900 years ago. Mm-hmm. Then you get into the 20th century, and of course, after 1900, our country was advancing industrially and commercially by leaps and bounds. Mm-hmm. And anyway, there was a man who wrote a book. I can't remember his name. I can't remember the name of the book. But uh, he sort of presented our Lord as a model businessman. Mm-hmm. The thesis of his book, as I recall, was 
if you want to succeed in business, you need to study the Gospels. Huh. <laughs> and by mm-hmm. yeah, by studying uh, studying Jesus, you'll find out how to be a successful businessman. Mm-hmm. And then after World War II, we have all kinds of Marxist revolutionary movements all over the world, huh? Mm-hmm. And some people then make our Lord into kind of a guerrilla fighter. Uh, yes. I think it was about 20, 25 years ago, if I remember correctly, in England, the Anglican Church and the Methodist Church put out a giant, uh, a joint uh, calendar, mm-hmm. and our Lord was there in uh, a gorilla uniform. Mm-hmm. So looking like Castro, I guess. <laughs> wearing, his, wearing his fatigues. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Well, then uh, the revolutionary spirit starts weakening uh, with the collapse of uh, the USSR, and we have other things that start appearing. Actually, before the collapse, mm-hmm. I'm thinking about, you know, we get into the 1960s, mm-hmm. and Jesus Christ becomes sort of a hippie. Yeah, that's right. What comes to mind? Uh, Jesus Christ Superstar. That's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. Mm-hmm. And then uh, when I was pastored in Annunciation, about once every several years or so, I would get a letter from the, the PETA people. Mm. Mm-hmm. You know what that stands for, don't you? Yes. What? People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals. Well, there's some people say they give it another spin to it. Mm-hmm. People eating tasty animals. <laughs> how did I know you were going to say that, Monsignor? How did I know? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, anyway, anyway, uh, and the letter is pretty much the same idea every time it came every several years. Mm-hmm. And there's a mention at some point that, you know, there's some evidence that Jesus was a vegetarian. Oh, no. And my reaction was, well, you ought to tell that to this fish in the Sea of Galilee. <laughs> yes. And, and, the and look, yes. no Jew, no practicing Jew could be a vegetarian. Yes, that Passover lamb would cause a problem. You're right. You are so right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You see, these vegetarians, uh, the, the Peter people that was in the letter, they never, they never connected the right dots. Mm-hmm. They had their ideology. Jesus was a very compassionate person. He wouldn't eat animals, would he? Mm-hmm. I guess that, that was the sentiment behind it, right. because there was no reason behind it, mm-hmm. just all sentiment. Yes, that's right. That's a good, that, yes, that's, that's very astute of you. Yes. Then we have uh, also all the Eastern stuff. Remember the fads and the... Mm-hmm. The Maharaji mm-hmm. and, and all that kind of stuff. You know, yes. the, the Beatles, they went to India and all that stuff. Yes. All those things. Mm-hmm. I hate to use that word stuff. Mm-hmm. And what we used to say, those things. Mm-hmm. That uh, sports announcer, John Madden, he was the one yes. that made the expression stuff. Oh, okay. Uh, popular, I understand. Mm-hmm. We well, used to say things. Didn't we? Okay. But anyway... Uh, you know, people started speculating, uh, what do we really know mm-hmm. about those years from the time he was 12 and they went back to Nazareth, Nazareth, and then when he appeared at about the age of 30 and began his public life, where was he? What was he doing? Could he have been in India? Could he have been in Tibet? Could he have been in Nepal? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, will it be a biblical response to that. No, when he came back to Nazareth, well, what did the townspeople say about him? That he was Isn't the car- this Jesus? The carpenter's the son. son of Joseph yes. and Mary? Yes. Where did he get all this stuff? Huh? Right. Remember? Yes. Mm-hmm. Their, their reaction was, ah, now we know where he's been, what he's been doing all those years. Mm-hmm. He's been away and he's just come back. Mm. And uh, then we uh, have environmentalism. Mm-hmm. Now, some years ago, there was some big conference here in Houston, and uh, there was a man I knew who uh, attended it, and he attended one of the talks. There were many, many talks in the course of the conference. And there was one given by a sister 
Uh, she had a PhD in biology. Originally, she had been teaching in her community college uh, in the Midwest. Uh, she was teaching at this girls' college that their community ran. But environmentalism came along, and there was something more important than uh, educating you know, young Catholic uh, college girls. And so she gave all that up, and she was going around the country, you know, environmentalism, environmentalism. Mm -hmm. And anyway, she gave her standard talk there at that conference, and I said, I wish I, I, wish I could hear a tape of that. And he said, I have one. Oh. <laughs> so he brought it to me, and I was listening and about midway through. Then uh, she revealed, you know, revealed the process, and he said, she had searched the gospel as to why our Lord had come into this world, and she found it in John chapter 10, verse 10, where he said, I have come that they may have life and may have it more abundantly. Mm. Mm. See how she was projecting, projecting yes. envir environmentalism on, on those words of his? Yes. Mm -hmm. And then we get, actually, we go from maybe from the ridiculous to the sordid. Uh, back in the 1980s, there was a fellow who uh, grew up in Corpus Christi. His name was Terrence McNally. Mm -hmm. And he wrote a scurrilous play. And he called it Corpus Christi after the town where he had grown up. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was my first a play. And then it was made into a movie. And in the play, Our Lord and the Apostles are a, a homosexual gang. Oh, man. Yeah, it was so so repugnant. Mm -hmm. uh, first, it was uh, in a theater off Broadway in New York, as I recall, mm -hmm. and then some people tried to produce it in London. And the government, back in those days in in England, they would not allow it. Mm -hmm. yes, it was just yes, so yes. ridiculous and so repugnant. Right. Mm -hmm. But it was made into a movie here in this country. Mm. Who was it said something? Nobody ever went broke underestimating the taste of the American public. Mm -hmm. Mm -mm -mm. You know, I'd, anyway, be, I'd be willing some, to bet it didn't do very well at the box office. Though. Yeah, go ahead. I was going to say I would be willing to bet it didn't do very well at the box office, though. I don't know. Well, I, thankfully, I didn't know anything about it. I don't know. In New York City, in New York City, it may have uh, may have sold a lot of. That may have been a lot of performances. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There, there would have been a, a, a segment of the population in New York City that mm -hmm. would have been receptive to their idea. Mm -hmm. So anyway, uh, that's why I want to call this talk, Which Jesus? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a good, yeah, that's a good name. Now, going back to the case of the sister, when she quoted John chapter 10, verse 10, she was overlooking completely when, when our Lord has said, to the apostles, when he rebuked them, oh, they were concerned about who was the more important among them. Remember, mm -hmm. uh, he concluded by saying, the Son of Man has not come to be served, but to serve, yes. and to give his life as a ransom for many. Mm -hmm. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. And also, uh, this is, she was well into middle age, and she'd been a religious for many, many, many years, and she'd been celebrating the Paschal Mystery all those years. Mm -hmm. And according to St. Paul, what is the Paschal Mystery? Mm -hmm. we, we read it all the time now. Today, you know, in our Catholic life, the term Paschal Mystery comes up frequently, doesn't it? In one place, in one place in the letter to the Romans, mm -hmm. St. Paul described our Lord he said he was delivered up for our sins mm -hmm. and rose again for our justification. Yes, thanks be to God. That's the Paschal Mystery. Mm -hmm. He was delivered up for our sins and rose again for our justification. Mm -hmm. And that's what we are you know, preparing to celebrate in uh, a little over a week from now. How he, deliver he was delivered up for our sins and rose again uh, for our justification. Mm -hmm. So, any comments? All right, do you have any additions, any other ideas that people are projecting on our Lord? <laughs> no, you're so smart. Now, I'm going to start picking up on that. I'm going to start paying attention now. That is very astute observation because that does happen all the time. Mm -hmm.
But I know I'm thankful that in the midst of all this questioning, all this interrogation, day to day building up to Easter, Jesus said, Jesus just lays it out. I say to you before Abraham yep. came to be, I am. Woo. Yep. Well, after this incident that we read today, if I'm, I'm not mistaken, he left Jerusalem. Mm-hmm. He left Jerusalem, and this it was a, during a visit in the winter time, and he headed east, probably the road to Jericho, and then he crossed over uh, across the Jordan, and we're told in John's Gospel to the place where John had been baptizing. Mm-hmm. It's interesting. Uh, there was a little bit of controversy in the year two thousand. Pope St. John Paul II, in the year 2000, uh, wanted to visit the places that were prominent in uh, our Lord's life. Mm-hmm. He wanted to start, I guess, in uh, in Iraq. You know, Abraham was from Ur of the Chaldees, which is down at the mouth of where the Tigris and Euphrates rivers enter into the uh, Persian Gulf. But mm-hmm. uh, Saddam Hussein wouldn't allow that. Mm. But uh, when it came to the, the baptism, there was a controversy because the Israelis, they wanted him to do that on the Israeli side of the Jordan River, whereas mm-hmm. the Jordanians, they wanted to do it on the oh. Jordan side. Uh-huh. Yes. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, there was a little bit of controversy. And it was very clear mm-hmm. in John's Gospel. It says that our Lord went on the other side of the Jordan where John had been baptizing. Yes. Mm-hmm. And he just lingered. Mm-hmm. He lingered. Mm-hmm. He didn't go back to Galilee. Before, after visiting Jerusalem, he would return to Galilee. Mm-hmm. In this case, though, he headed east. Now, remember, this is in the winter. So the Passover was still some months away. Mm-hmm. And they just went east in, uh, where Jericho was and crossed. And he just lingered. That's where he was when uh, Lazarus died. Mm -hmm. And so then he went back. Remember, the apostles, they didn't want to go back. They said, they were trying to kill you. Right. Remember, Mm -hmm. Thomas said, well, let us go back and die with him. Mm -hmm. Yes. (laughs) And then after he raised Lazarus from the dead, he then headed north to Ephraim. Mm -hmm. And once again, he lingered. We don't know. At what point, uh, f- from uh, when he uh, left Jerusalem and went to the Jordan, and then when he, uh, we don't know how much time passed. Mm-hmm. But anyway, the second stage, he went north to Ephraim, and there he just lingered and lingered and lingered. Mm-hmm. And what was he doing? He was waiting for the Passover. Mm-hmm. And so then... We'll be celebrating Passover, uh, Palm Sunday uh, mm-hmm. uh, this weekend. Mm-hmm. And so he then left Ephraim and headed south back to Jerusalem, timing it mm-hmm. that he would enter Jerusalem on the Sunday before the Passover. Mm-hmm. So he spent that time, I guess, sort of just preparing, mm-hmm. preparing mm-hmm. to be delivered up and rise again for our justification. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Well, can I say have a happy Palm Sunday? <laughs> you always leave me speechless. I'm speechless and somber now, thinking about our Lord. I'm kind of, I'm kind of just joking. I remember when somebody said uh, on Halloween, people were wishing him a happy Halloween, and he said, I don't know what a happy Halloween is. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> well, it doesn't feel right to wish someone a somber Palm Sunday, so I, I'm happy with happy Palm Sunday, but maybe I'm too cheerful. You know, the only place where I ever differed with Bishop Sheen in that great life of Christ that he wrote mm-hmm. was concerning Palm Sunday. Mm-hmm. Because remember, uh, there were these two Greeks they're called Greeks. Mm-hmm. And they were entering Jerusalem at the same time. Obviously, they were going to be there, to me, to celebrate the Passover. Mm-hmm. Because, you see, if a Jew was going to fully celebrate the Passover once in his life, 
he had to go to Jerusalem mm -hmm. right. because the lamb had to be sacrificed in the temple. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we have a lot of Catholics you know, going to these Seder suppers and all that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a problem with that. Mm -hmm. But anyway, uh, they uh, uh, come to Andrew. Mm -hmm. They meet Andrew and they ask if they would, Andrew would introduce them to our Lord. Mm -hmm. you know, he was a celebrity as, as far as they were concerned. Mm -hmm. And Andrew then gets Philip. I think the reason why he got Philip was that Philip grew up way, way in the north, in the Decapolis region. Mm -hmm. Decapolis, that's a Greek word. It means ten cities. Mm -hmm. See, there were a lot of Greeks left around, left around that part of the world after Alexander's conquest. Mm -hmm. And I suspect that maybe Philip was the best Greek speaker among them. Oh, that makes sense. And so, yeah, and so that's the reason why Andrew brought Philip mm -hmm. uh, to, to make the introduction. Mm -hmm. And Bishop Sheen, in his description, he talks about how our Lord, had his fame had extended even out into the Gentile world. Mm -hmm. Even these Gentiles were there. Mm -hmm. uh, I thoroughly disagree with that. Mm -hmm. To me, it was clear that these were uh, Jews from the diaspora. Oh, yes. Who, mm -hmm. yeah, remember the reason why the whole Old Testament was translated into Greek mm -hmm. in Alexandria was because there were so many who had been out in the diaspora for so long mm -hmm. that they didn't speak mm -hmm. Aramaic. Yes. And so I, I think that that's what these were. These were... Mm -hmm. Jews from the, uh, the diaspora, mm -hmm. and they were there in Jerusalem because they wanted to celebrate the Passover mm -hmm. fully. Mm -hmm. You know, we have Catholics going to the Seder with, with Jewish people mm -hmm. that wanted to learn about this. Mm -hmm. And my, my objection, I raised, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. What we have is the fulfillment. Right, that's right. We right. have the fulfillment. Yes. Instead right. of Catholics going to the Seder and learning from the Jews about the Seder, mm -hmm. Catholics should be going to the Seder and explaining to the Jews that that was all uh, uh, foreshadowing of what was going to accomplish by our Lord in the, pas in the Paschal Mystery. Yes. It's a beautiful that, Doesn't that make more shadowing. sense? Yes. Yes. It's much more fun. Who Who is in ignorance and who has the knowledge? Mm-hmm. We have the knowledge, not the people who celebrate the Seder. Mm -hmm. That's the way I connect the dots anyway. Mm -hmm. Well, have a happy Palm Sunday, and <laughs> Thank you. fear not, little flock. It has pleased the Father to give you the kingdom. No cross, no crown. We'll see you soon, friends. Bye-bye.